Hi, I'm Shruti and I'm the product manager for Clevertap's Lifecycle Optimizer. Lifecycle Optimizer enables brands to define lifecycle stages to better understand their users. Once the stages are defined, they can engage users to influence them to move into the next stage to better retain them. Mobile engagement platforms often only focus on campaigns and journeys. We've created the Lifecycle Optimizer to look at levels of engagement across the entire user base. A lifecycle optimizer works through a four-step process. To get started, we need to do a one-time setup that involves setting up the initial lifecycle framework model. From the left navigation menu, select lifecycle optimizer. These are the four steps. Step one, select a lifecycle framework. We provide two models to choose from, AIC and AAARR. Step 2. Map users to defined lifecycle stages based on qualifying actions. Step 3. Engage with users based on the stage that they are in. Step 4. Experiment and roll out to all users in a stage to influence them to move into the next stage. First, choose the framework. You can choose from either AIC or AAARR. Which framework to choose depends on the type of business and goals of the organization. The AIC framework was co-created with our partners at Feature. Brands that choose the AIC framework tend to focus on the types of actions a user takes. User actions are bucketed into three engagement layers, acknowledgement, interest, and conversion, with the core action or conversion event representing the highest value action that a user can take. This framework works well for all types of verticals. Social networking and apps that have an ad revenue model tend to use this framework. Brands that choose the AAARR framework examine user progression through sequential steps. The five defined stages of this model are acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and revenue. This framework is commonly used by verticals like e-commerce and travel. Let's go ahead and select the AIC framework. Next, define what each stage means for your business. Do this by defining the events that qualify users into each stage of the life cycle. While there are commonalities within industries, mapping events to a life cycle stage is fully customizable to individual apps. At the acknowledgement stage, mappings should identify actions that indicate user interest. For many apps, this could be the first app launch or registration. At the interest stage, mappings are more geared to actions of users who are engaging in a more meaningful way. For an app focused on collecting content, this could include completing a profile, sharing a board with a friend, or liking a post. Conversion presents the highest action a user can take within the app. We've set the stage up to have the core action event being purchased. Finally, we choose qualifying time values. This basically determines the time frame used to qualify users for different stages of the lifecycle model. For example, a user must have liked the post in the last 30 days to be included in the interest stage. 30 days here is the qualifying time. And the setup is complete. Hit publish and the lifecycle model is created. Engagement to influence users into deeper levels of engagement can now begin. From the engagement snapshot, Click View Engagements. Now let's take a look at the acknowledgement journey. Engagements can be rolled out with or without experimentation. Experimentation is useful to see which engagement will work best or an engagement can be published without testing. You can experiment with a percentage of users to gauge the result. The experimentation and iteration phase allows multiple variations so data-driven decisions can be made based on performance. To experiment, choose a certain number of users for the test and then create journeys to engage users within a particular test. In this example, we see that there are several engagements running. We will choose to rule out the engagement that performs the best. This journey will now begin to apply to all users in a stage. The results of this engagement can then be compared to the system control group. A system control group is a group of users who do not receive any engagement from Clevertap. A comparison of results against the system control group will measure the effectiveness of the engagement against a neutral baseline.
The comparison gives you an indication of how well the engagement is doing. Experiments can be run for all stages of the life cycle. Measure the results to see how successful the engagements were to influence users to move into the next stage. The pyramid here shows the distribution of the user base across each of the stages at the current point in time. The change over time graph shows how users move across stages over time. It measures the impact of the engagement efforts. Transitions in a time period show the details of a particular stage and see how users transition into the stage from other stages. Finally, the daily transitions graph shows the trend of these transitions over time. We're really excited about the value this feature can bring to our customers and can't wait to see it be a part of every brand's engagement strategy. Thank you.